So hello everyone, thank you so much for joining this very, very unique tasting of our whiskey discovery from Douglas Lane. This is a completely brand new concept that we have developed in which we're giving you the, op the opportunity to taste whiskies that haven't yet hit the shelves, which is, I cannot wait to sample some of these whiskies. As I said, we're going to be going with the Epicurean, then Timorous Beastie, Scallywag, and finishing with Big Pete. So just before we get into it, I'm going to ask, everyone can keep themselves on mute when possible, but before we get into it, I'll tell you a little bit about Douglas Lane, who we are, what we do if anyone doesn't quite know. So we are a family-run company and have been since 1948. And since 1948, we've been blenders and bottlers, meaning we've created some of the lovely brands you can see over my shoulder, the brands that you have in front of you, such as Big Pete, Scallywag, Timorous Beastie, and we are also being bottlers, bottling some of our exceptional single casks. Again, I think over this shoulder, a bit old particular, over provenance range, extra particular, and of course, extra particular black, if you're really looking for that rare, rare dram with some of the Port Ellen that we've bottled, McAllen that we've bottled. But we've been bottles and distillers since 1948, and most recently, in November 2019, we moved over Strathern Distillery and became distillers for the first time in our long, long history. So Fake Game Distillers the first time, and if anyone knows, and I'm going to have to be very specific so about what about. I talk about, considering this is recorded, is that we are building Clutha. So Clutha was originally going to be down by the Clyde side. We've had to relocate, um, and again, can't be specific about that, but we're relocating Clutha, no, and we're, hoping, no, we're hoping, ideally, by the end of the year, uh, we'll have the first run of spirit, but that is, that's a fingers crossed situation. It's been a horrible year for all of us, um, and we're hoping that would be the situation. So here it goes. But I'm going to talk a little bit more about Douglas Lane, but I want to get straight into the first dram as soon as possible. So if you've got four drams in front of you, please, we're going to start with the first one, which is the Epicurean Ruby Port. So grab your first glass and let's have a wee nose of it. So the Epicurean, this is part of our wood series, the Ruby Port. Over my right shoulder, you'll see the Epicurean. This is one of my favorite bottlings that we did last year, which is our Reeve Salt cask. This was done as a dessert wine cask. This is finished in a ruby port cask. So this comes in at 48% high strength, not cask strength, but high strength. And I tasted this for the first time last week, and we did a very quick photo shoot for this whiskey discovery. And this has got to come in the top three bottlings the market regional malts, in my opinion, for my flavor profile. I absolutely adore it. Rock Island Sherry on my left shoulder and the Epicurean Reef Salad have been my two favorites. And this is really, really challenging it for a top place for me. Um, with the market regional malts, the best bottlings I think we've ever done. The interesting thing about this one, and please have a nose, have a taste of it, get comfortable with it. And I'll, I'll talk you through the taste notes in just a second or what you think your taste notes are. But the one interesting thing is this is a single cask blended malt. Now, that sounds like a bit of an oxymoron, a bit of a juxtaposition there. And what I mean is what we're doing is vatting and finishing in one single cask. So this has come to only 684 bottles that are going to be released of this. So only 684. How are we getting on with the nose? For me, I've there's... Got a lot, Go on, Gavin. I've got, a lot, uh, I've got a lot of pineapple. I've got a lot of... Um, also, uh, pear drops as well. So it's, it's very fresh, very vibrant, very fruity. It's very sweet. Yeah, I get the immediately the nose for me, there's that kind of rum raisin ice cream. There's that also, yeah. depth and warmth to it. And plums. I agree with the pineapple. I think the pineapple is definitely there for me. It's like that kind of seared, almost caramelized pineapple. But I've also got that sweet banana you know the the, the chocolate covered uh, bananas you know those sweets yeah oh i've not had them in a long <laughs> long time i haven't had them in a long time either but it brings back memories <laughs> so first dram thank you all for joining slange cheers Slange the bar. Cheers. Cheers. so enjoy that we'll talk about the tasting notes in just a second to talk a little bit about the Epicurean and why we've introduced it into the wood series. So the Epicureans are lowland malt. So we take single cast, single malts from the lowlands of Scotland only. So part of our remarkable regional malts in which we give you the ultimate distillation of each region. 
what I mean by that is that traditional flavor profile that you would associate with that region. For example, the amount of times I've been in a bar and someone said, that's a classic Speyside flavor profile, that's a classic Isla flavor profile. Before I worked in the whiskey industry, I had no idea what that meant. But within the remarkable regional malts, that's what we're offering. So for example, Scallywag, which we're gonna go on to taste, Scallywag Core, our non-age statement, is a classic flavor profile of Speyside. And the Epicurean that we're sampling just now, the core non-age statement version, is a classic flavor profile of the lowlands. So the two words we use to describe it is fresh and citric, and it always comes first whenever we do a lineup of tastings. And I always make sure that I get people to leave a little bit in their glass because we do everything at higher natural cast strength. And every time someone does a tasting, when they taste the Epicurean, they think, oh, that's a bit intense, but you're going from zero to 46.2%. And that's always going to be a bit of a shock. So once you get to the end and you've, your palate's used to that, it's kind of climatized to that. I get people to nose back from Big Pete all the way back to the Epicurean. And when they nose it, all of a sudden it's pear drops, it's fresh, it's floral, herbal notes are coming through into it. And I always make the point of saying that it comes first because it's the least intense, but it does not mean that it's the least flavorful, but it's the least intense. And that's why we selected the Epicurean to run this wood series, because it takes so much color, so much flavor from the wood. And I think that's very apparent in the color of this. If anyone's had a quick look at it, it's a really I'm like rosy wine brown. And that's a ruby port cask finished in that. And I think you can see how much it's actually taken from that. Can you say, sorry, can you hear me? Yes, Benjamin, sorry, I'd, I'd stopped immediately. Ah, sorry, I, I do. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, um, can you tell how long it was in that single pot cask for the finish? It would be anywhere between six months and a year, but I honestly do not know. Uh, in all honesty, I wasn't uh, responsible for the making of it. As you know, Cara, Chris, Fred uh, reserved that right. So it probably been anywhere between six months and a year, but I think I'm saying that basis, my own knowledge and understanding of our brands, um, but I genuinely don't know. I wouldn't be able to answer that. All right, Ed. thank you. But the great thing is with our whiskies, and again, what I'm going to go to talk about, and I'll talk about tasting notes again in a second, but everything that we do, our ethos is as natural as it gets, meaning no caramel colouring. So the colouring that you see from all the whiskies this evening, there's zero caramel colouring. That colour in that whisky is from the cask. And I think it's so, so important, especially for, I'm, I'm considering myself a whisky geek. I absolutely adore whisky. I'm seeing being able to go into the sample room with the 65 plus distilleries that we work with and covering up the label and actually having a guess at, I think this is a 14 year old and a second Phil Sherry, but maybe from the space side region at 48, maybe 52%. I can actually guess and analyze whiskey basis everything instead of having to just guess. Um, and I absolutely adore that. So all that color that you've seen, and I think the fact that this is already, this is majority bourbon for profile before it's gone into that ruby port cask, you can see the effect that it's had on it. You can see the massive effect that's had on it. That's what so, I love about Douglas Lane is uh, the, the fact that they don't chill filter the fact that they, it's just natural colour, no E158. So it's, a, yeah, I just, that's why I love Douglas Lane because it, it, it's, it shows um, there's nothing, to, no flawlessness, there's nothing to be, you know, uh, you know, putting stuff in that you're not supposed to, um, you know, you're, you're, you're showing it naturally the way it should be. And that's what's yeah. good thing. Yeah. I've had a, I've had confirmation from a ghost that it is nine months in Ruby Port. Oh, yeah. There you go. Nine months in Ruby Port, it's finished. And as, as Gavin's saying quite rightly, we also non-chill filter, meaning allowing all the fatty acids that naturally occur in casks, they naturally occur in casks, all those fatty acids and proteins come through into the whiskey. Now, this is still debated in the whiskey industry, but in my opinion, 100% affects texture. And whether that indirectly or directly affects flavor, in my opinion, it definitely does. It definitely yeah. affects flavor. And the other thing that we do is high or natural cask strength. We're about to see a cask strength in just a second. I'm sure some of you already looked at the label and gone, this is going to be fun. But that was at 48% high strength, so controlled strength. And the reason that we do higher ABV is because alcohol is a great carrier of flavor. I always use kind of aftershaves and perfumes as an example because they're a great, they're alcohol based because they carry flavor beautifully. And that's the reason that we do higher natural cast strength. And the 
The beautiful aesthetic bonus is that if you add water, you chill it down, it doesn't become cloudy. It wasn't the main objective of doing higher natural cash strength, but it is a happy bonus, let's say. Now, you've sat with it for a while. We've gotten used to the fact that we're chasing high in natural cash strength whiskies. How is the palate for everyone? Oh, I must say I really enjoyed this. So I can definitely um, understand why you're so enthusiastic about it. So I've written down some notes that I had at first. I think there's a real rush of sweetness um, with the initial sip. And then there are also uh, like juicy fruits, like oranges, also those um, jellied um, lemon <coughs> slices, stuff like that. I also had um, some cotton candy, some cocktail cherries, um, and like a very creamy full mouthfeel. So that was really good. And uh, I was also surprised the finish was very long and also a bit um, like chocolatey. I think here in Germany, we got those, I think they're called Jaffa cakes or something that have yeah. the, um, like this cookie dough and then there's this um, orange <laughs> jelly <laughs> on top. And that um, I also got reminded of. Yeah, I think they're absolutely great. It was, I, I really agree with the length of finish. I mean, I don't know if anyone's taken a recent sip or even left it for a while, but it's sticking to my teeth. It's clinging there. It's clinging to my tongue. It's a long, long finish. It's really moorish, almost like treacle coming through into it. Yeah. I've also got the, 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 the pear drops. It's, it's like, no, I'm going to say it's like a herbal minty tea with pear in it. It's, like, it's a very herbal, very tea-like. Yeah. And I, I, that's what I loved about this is because it's not just one dimensional. You've got yep. all that lovely fresh citric concept coming from the Epicurean, and all of a sudden that port finish is, it, you have an expectation of a port finish, even a port aged whiskey. Mm -hmm. I think we've all you know, tasted them, we have that expectation. I think this kind of takes you on a bit, bit of a journey through those expectations, dipping and bobbing all the way through it and giving you this um, very bizarre and wonderful flavor profile for it's, it's a blended malt. Yeah. finished in a ruby port cask um, and one of only 684 bottles and I really think you can see based on the colour that nine months in ruby port how much has taken from. It's very interesting how what, what difference this ruby port cask is, is doing to the Epicurean because um, normally I, I know um, it's very light citrus notes in this Epicurean and here I get more of the sweetness of, of, of oranges, like uh, like the like he, he said just a, a minute ago, uh, or, or plums, something like that, raisins. And uh, the finish is, is extraordinarily long. I don't know such a long finish in an Epicurean. And yeah, I, absolutely I completely agree. Nice, nice bitter notes at the end, like something like perhaps the tea, or um, grapefruit, something, something like that. Very interesting, very nice, this one. Brilliant. I've nearly broken one of my first rules of a tasting, which is maintaining a level in what the first glass. I've been enjoying <laughs> that far too much. If you can, do keep a little bit in each glass. You'll keep remnants even because it's so sticky, but try and keep a little bit in each glass and we'll nose back the way. I nearly broke my own rule there and I had to stop myself. But if we're ready, are we ready to move on to the next one? Or is yep. anyone get anyone? I have one more question. So with the wood series, um, is it always the classic Epicurean and that's put into the cask or is also the recipe um, changed a bit? Or a... Yeah, so it's the normal specs for the Epicurean and then we're putting it in for these finishes. So I think we've got three in total in 2021 releasing, which I can't talk about ah, okay. as is recorded. Uh, okay. Before anyone asks, I'm watching a few people going, you know, uh -huh. Yeah, um, we've got three coming up, and then this is obviously a lead on from last year when we released the Reef Salt with the cognac cask finish as well, which were just it, it's it's really refreshing the fact that obviously Douglas Lane we do the classic very serious let's say malts, and then we do this very weird and wonderful extended version and really play around with it because at the end of the day that's all that's what Scotch whiskey is all about. It's the first thing that's pushing people forward and pushing people to be the best or producing the best whiskey that they can. It's innovation, trying new things, and it's great. I have access to a sample room that has all of these whiskies that do and say that, which is great. Can't complain. I so we're ready to move on to Timur's speech. Stuart, with the, I think with, with the uh, first uh, finish, so the Cotro tea um, Epicurean wood finish, 
I guess you're, you're really setting a benchmark, right? This, this was an absolutely outstanding whiskey, um, starting from the color and this the intensive flavors from, from, the, from the French red wine. Uh, and I guess this one also uh, is pretty close. So uh, really, really nice. Um, can, can you maybe, can you comment on the lead malts in the Epicurean? We, we do know that the main distilleries which are involved in Scalavec, the main distilleries in, which are involved in Timorous Beastie. What, what about the Epicurean? Is it the typical Okatosh and Bladnock or is it something more, maybe from the new ones, uh, if, if it is allowed to know? Thank you for that, Heinz. But no, I can't directly talk about them. Okay. Um, unfortunately. Um, for a number of reasons, but um, you could probably, let's say, guess what is going into the Epicurean. If I, if I hint at that, that's plausible deniability, let's say. Okay. Uh, but no, I can't tell you directly, but you could probably guess exactly what's going into the Epicurean. So you mean you can't do that now while you're still recording? No, I just can't do that in general. <laughs> <laughs> no worry, thank guys. you. Us, us fellow honorary ambassadors will get a wee heads up later on. Yeah, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> Chances and you, you know that you're putting me on the spot. I know you know. <laughs> no, uh, I can't tell you directly, but you could probably guess exactly what's going into it. But okay. if we're ready, um, I know a lot of you have seen the percentage on this next whiskey. We're moving into Timorous Beastie Meet the Beast number two. So, this I've been very excited about. I tried this for the first time just yesterday. Uh, just to kind of get a heads up and understand what we're getting into. So Timorous Beastie is one is our Highland blended malt, taking single cask, single malts from the Highlands of Scotland only. And there's no exception here at all. The one thing that we're doing here is doing it at natural cask strength. So giving you essentially just an amplified version of what the Timorous Beastie non-age statement is, our core version, which comes in at 46.8. This coming in at 54.9 percent cask strength it's a hundred percent bourbon cask aged predominantly first fill bourbon sweet and vanilla it is timorous beastie amplified pushed forward far more intense of course take your time with this it is 54.9 percent so it is intense immediately in the nose if you feel that it needs a little bit of water absolutely add it if you feel that it needs it the great thing about Douglas Lane and a number of companies that offer cask strength or high strength whiskies is that what they're offering you is a liquid that you can then dictate how you drink. They're not taking away that opportunity to you know, lower the water, lower the ABV. They're offering you, or we're offering you as well, that opportunity to drink this as you would like to drink it. They're not bringing it down to 40, 42%, percent or allowing to drink it at this natural cask strength. Oh, I think that's actually quite tame. Uh, to tell you the truth, it's, it's not that strong alcohol that, that bursts through your nose, actually. I think the, the fact this is predominantly first fill, it's really softened that, especially on the nose. It's bringing it into that kind of buttery vanilla, that floral mm. vanilla. A lot of citrus notes in that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Slange, cheers. Slange, bar. Whoa. See, I absolutely adore that, that wave of intensity, a delicate kind of highland spices coming through. Because on the nose, I don't think that's quite apparent. But what's great is when, you're al when alcohol hits the palate, it bursts completely open. But we're definitely going to see that with Big Pete later. But what's great is a natural cast strength Timorous Beastie really shows how flavoursome that actually is. I think we're all very guilty of looking at the colour of a whiskey and assuming it's going to be thin, it's going to be light, it's not going to be very flavourful. That is everything but mm. lack, like lacking flavor. It's absolutely right. lovely. What I actually like, but I mean, obviously the color is very uh, light. I mean, for a Highland whiskey, what everyone thinks of a Highland whiskey is always dark, sherry, uh, you know, that kind of Dalmore, Wingiri, that very sherry influenced, um, you know, but that is really, really interesting, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing, you know, we've, we've always talked about, you know, as a, as a tame little mouse, it's timorous by name, not by nature. You know, <laughs> even our core is 46.8%, it's a bold whiskey. You know, the reason that we've called it Meet the Beast, because it is an intense, big, flavoursome whiskey. Um, and I think everyone has this concept of a hot a lovely little mouse in the front. Absolutely not. It is a fierce, fierce creature. 
Um, but this, of course, Timorous Beastie is linked to Ravi Burns to a mouse. We sleek it, cool and Timorous Beastie. And as I said, it's anything but. I think you can see immediately with the flavour profile that sweet vanilla, I think, nips it on the head, that floral buttery note, especially in the nose, and bringing it onto the palate. For me, there's not cinnamon. It's not brinching into what sherry cask would give you in cinnamon, but I think there's definitely things like nutmeg in there. There's almonds, there's cashews. Yeah. Stuart, yeah. what sort of age is this? I mean, ballpark. Ballpark, you're looking between seven to nine years old. Between seven and nine years old. Uh, so, so the reason I ask is that I'm getting quite a lot of kind of new make notes, notes that I would expect from um, from Tomatin's new make um, on the palate. It's reminding me of that big time. Yeah, it's mm. very malty. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And the one thing I love about, you know, we in our provenance range, we're bottling younger whiskies, let's say. But the one thing I absolutely adore being a whiskey geek is realizing, you know, reveling in the fact that new make spirit is different from distillery to distillery. So I'm venturing into exceptional single casks here and not necessarily our remarkable regional malts. But what I love is, you know, for example, we had a Dalyun 12 the other night. And as soon as you bring it onto the nose, it's that salty, meaty character that you want from Dalyun. Do you know what I mean? And uh, we had a Mortlach that was quite surprising because you, you assume that's going to be a bit more salty and meaty. We had a, a Mortlach 14 we had, and you assume it's going to be that salty meaty, and it was actually really floral and light and delicate. And all of a sudden, you know, you, the whiskey geek in me is wondering, well, what's going on here? You know, how much influence has the wood had on this, considering it was, it was fairly it was a fairly young one for Mortlach? But I think I completely agree with you. The new mix spirit is shining through, but that high, that natural cast strength and I think that the wood has had a lot of influence in this because the vanilla and sweetness is definitely there. It really is quite powerful, I think. Yeah, the, the nose on this is is super bourbon casked. Uh, yeah. I think this is probably the clearest white chocolate I've ever got on the nose of any whiskey. Absolutely. Um, uh, it's incredible. But then the the flavour on the palate is it's not... The nose and the palate don't match up for me. And not in a bad way, but they just... Yeah. They're, they're totally separate, and I love it when that happens. Yeah, when 100%. You get a totally separate experience. I always talk about that in tastings and how you know you either have continuity between the nose and the palate, and they just they work or they amplify or whatever. Um, and then you have some juxtaposition where they just completely change. And I find with peaty whiskies, they definitely always change, especially at higher cast strength. Of course, you're going to have that burst of peat and saltiness. But I can think you're completely right. It's not often that you see that with a younger bourbon cask aged whiskey, but yeah, that white chocolate. And someone said whiskey trail said creamy toffee. I get that straight through the palate it just starts building and building building but it's really subtle on the nose for me but again whiskey subjective right you're never going to be wrong i always usually do my tastings quite lazily and then get encourage people to give me tasting notes because it's you know i used to work as a sommelier and it's you know developing a relationship with a whiskey or a wine or, or whatever is so much more important than, than me just barking you know it's oranges you know almonds or whatever it's great because the power of suggestion is a very powerful thing but if you develop your own relationship with a whiskey, with a beer, with a wine, with anything, then the next time you drink it or the next time you drink a variant of that, it's, ah, that's different for these reasons than the first time I drank it. And I think that's so much more important. Good. Will this be a core expression or is it a limited edition? So this is going to be a limited edition. Thanks. Okay, so there, there won't be a replacement for the 12 years old uh, cast strength of Timorous Beastie. Absolutely not. This is one of okay. 3,600 bottles. I see. Oh, so this is going to be available exclusively for a four to six week period with our Douglas Lane Emporiums. Ah. It's going to be exclusively available there and then after which um, it will be available from other specialist retailers. Okay. So the release date of this is looking about mid-May as well. That's what I'm not saying. close enough that I can share the artwork with you and I can promise you the artwork on this, on the bottle, I desperately want to make it into a poster. The colours on it are stunning. I really can't wait for you to see it, but the finish is beautiful. The outer uh, packaging is great. Um, I, I really wish I could show you. I don't have it in the house to show you, um, but it's absolutely stunning. But the label itself and the bottle, I really want to be able to turn into a poster. I think it would work beautifully up in my very bare wall that I'm staring at at the moment. I think you should definitely do that. Um, as you might know, um, Dini, she's here now too, and we got a, a, little, um, a little visitor as well. So we would be on mute most of the time. But um, now that you said it, I'm really, really curious 
for any new Tomorrow's Beastie bottle and you've made me even more curious for that one now. Toby, I know you're a massive fan of Timorous Beastie, so uh, absolutely. But yeah, it's it's a really stunning label. Absolutely stunning. And the whiskey matches it. Oh, I, I really love it too. So that's... And yeah, I also have this... Um, yeah, right. I got the, um, the fitting glass. Nice. <laughs> and now I think I go back on mood because... Um, there's You're getting overrun there, Toby. Okay. <laughs> So, Toby, I, I got the information that uh, a few bottles of Timorous Beastie of this new expression will uh, come to Germany. <laughs> so, I've seen Vibka said vanilla fudge in the nose, and absolutely, there's that deep, rounded vanilla on it. I completely agree. And then nutmeg and clove. Yeah, clove, I think, is one I was looking for. The nutmeg and almonds that I was talking about, it does develop into slight aniseedy for me, which I really enjoy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that is... Yeah, that'll pull your socks up. That is an absolutely cracking drum. Well, I like, I said it before about the, the non chill filter in the natural colour. What I actually like about Douglas Lane as well is the fact that um, they use a lot of comedy, they use a lot of uh, illustrative work on the bottlings, on the advertising, on the marketing. I find that just amazing, especially like with every bottle that comes out of the region over Mark Malls, like that for the, for instance, the Timorous Beastie, that was the winter edition. The 18 winter edition. That's right. Got that machine um, as well. Great bottle, but the thing is, it's just the, the, the packaging, what is actually being presented, I just love it. Especially every, everything to do with the regional remarkable malls is just uh, brilliant, because there's always a bit of Scottish history behind it. Um, and it's, um, yeah, it's, it's presented in a good way, especially different other limited edition bottlings, especially with this guy on it here. The Glasgow <laughs> edition, yeah, that was, a, that was a very, is that your face as well? Hi. Yeah, I'm glad you got that. Brilliant. The Duke of Wellington, that's, Queen, that's never it. going away. That Conan has said never going away. He got, a brief, he got a brief relaxation period during lockdown, but uh, it's going straight back up now that the pubs are open straight back up but no you're completely right and again that's something that i i absolutely adored I, prior to douglas lane i was working in india for two years for a much larger commercial company and as, as soon as i had the opportunity to work with douglas lane I, I jumped at it you know we work with 65 plus distilleries going into multiple different casks monthly samples coming through it's just it's you know it's a dream come true and, and it was funny when i was working i was out in india and I was considered the whiskey expert and i'm anything but i've always said that if you're a, the smartest person in the room you're in the wrong room the opportunity to learn from Fred, Cara, Chris, it's invaluable. Um, and the fact that we're such a tight-knit team, you're learning constantly from, from each group. So it's it's absolutely wonderful. But as you say, we're very playful with the labels. You know, we like to play around with them, like to keep cute characters, lovely dogs on it. But the whiskey inside is very, very serious, as I think we've already illustrated with not just the first two, but the first one even. And we take that very, very seriously. So... Have we had any other tasting that was in the Timorous Beastie Meet the Beast? How are we getting Very on nice. with it? Very nice. I, I think uh, what was uh, formerly said, the white chocolate in the nose, for me, it switches in the mouth to a dark and bitter chocolate. Very yeah. nicely. Brilliant. Very interesting, yeah. Milky bar with a dusting of cinnamon. Ali <laughs> there with the exceptional... Uh, taste notes as always. Yeah, absolutely. Is that in the nose, Ali? He's going to come on and talk to yeah. us. Yeah, chat. There yeah, he definitely. Is. Yeah, just just on the nose. Yeah, sorry, I'm here. <laughs> Apologies milky bar. As well, I thought it started at half past. Have you got it as well, Christopher? I've got milky bar on there as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apart from, I had a dusting of cocoa on my milky bar. Ah. <laughs> See, yeah, very very close. Very close. Brilliant. Brilliant. So are we, are we that, uh, Sorry, Toby. Ah, I al just wanted to say I also had that white chocolate on the nose and then not so much on the palate, but it made a very strong return in the finish, which I really like. So that's Brilliant. A very cool development. Fantastic. So are we ready for dram number three? I thought I saw someone throwing hands up there. Brilliant. So we'll move on to dram number three. Scallywag chocolate which I'm sure a lot of people are salivating at. So Scallywag chocolate is 100% sherry cask matured. 
This is one of only 3,000 bottles and bottled at 48% high strength, not natural cash strength, but high strength alcohol. Now, if anyone knows Cara, and I'm going to talk about uh, Cara, Fred and Chris in just a second, but if anyone knows Cara, she's got quite a sweet tooth. Uh, Cara being our director of whiskey and third generation of the Lane family, quite a sweet tooth. This, the reason that we select the world chocolate and the reason we do Scallywag chocolate, you know, sherry cask whiskey, space side whiskeys work beautifully with chocolate. Scallywag chocolate especially pairs with it, even Scallywag core pairs perfectly with chocolate. But the reason that we set this is we found a bunch of casks that had very significant cocoa, slightly bitter milk chocolate flavor profiles. So safe to say when we decided to do another one, Cara relished the opportunity to find casks that had those characteristics. And I think it shines completely through here. I'm trying to pick this out on the nose. There's that milk chocolate and I don't want to ruin anyone's chocolate experience, that kind of nut and raisin um, pushing through on the nose there. Delicate spice, and you know that's you know what I love about, again, the whiskies that we do, whether they're higher natural cash strength is on the nose, you know those flavours that are maybe subtler in the nose are going to pop completely through on the palate. Slange, cheers. So are we assuming this is Oloroso? Yes. Yeah. Old Jamaica, Billy says. Thanks, Pipka. It's almost like syrup. How? That is very close to maple syrup for me on the, on the palate. The texture is insanely thick, really viscous. Those bitter cocoa notes, milk chocolate pushing through. I don't think white chocolate's really getting a shout out here. It's definitely starting about milk and pushing upwards. Rum raisins in the palate, Heinz completely agree with that. More people coming in, it's great. Huh? But I absolutely adore it. If anyone's got a bottle of Scallywag next to them, has anyone seen the bottle? Toby's getting a run for his money here. If anyone's seen the bottle of Scallywag, you'll see that Scallywag's actually missing a tooth on the bottle. I've got one here behind me. And the reason it's missing a tooth, that's not a design flaw. That was a real dog. This was Binks. So Binks sadly passed away just before release Scallywag, but has been immortalized on the bottle. So if you notice any bottle of Scallywag that you'll get is missing a tooth. And that's because it was a real dog. It was a long line of fox terriers, the Scallywag that the Douglas Lane family had. Um, and now we've got Cooper, who's a lovely little dog. I rarely get to see now, but an absolutely lovely little dog. But as I said, Let's talk a little bit about the Ling family as you're enjoying that and just take your time with it. Let's talk a little bit about the Ling family. We were obviously started by Fred Douglas Lane, Fred Ling Sr. Um, he was the founder of the company. And then Fred Ling Jr. Uh, has taken, he's our chairman and owner, taking a slight step back as Cara Ling, our third generation, our director of whiskey, and Chris Leggett, our CEO, have came in in 2013 and are very much starting to take the reins of the company. Um, so it's a family run company and the one thing I love and I was, I was talking about this and I tasted the other day and it's, it was, it's a really kind of lovely way to look at a family run company. I sat with Sandy Hislop a while ago, if anyone knows Sandy's the master blender of Ross Salute and Glenn Livett and Ballantyne's wonderful, wonderful guy, very knowledgeable guy. And he talked about the casks that he's using are not casks that he put down, they were put down by his predecessor and casks that he's currently putting down are not for him, they're for his successor. And I absolutely loved this idea and then translating that to Douglas Lane, casks that Fred has used were put down by his father, the casks that Cara is now using, some of our XOP, XOP Black, would have been put down by her grandfather, by her father. And I absolutely love that whiskey is one of the only industries, or food and beverage is one of the only industries where you see that level of romance and just passion filter through, and especially when you translate into family-run company, the amount of care that's taken is, is, is wonderful. I've seen Steve here, I do like Scallywag, I bought a few in the previous chocolate one. Is this different to your previous one? It'll be different in the sense that we've selected different casks. So we're still aiming for that chocolate flavor profile, that chocolate mm -hmm. characteristic of Scallywag, but we're obviously using a completely different pool of casks because they've been depleted. So we're using a completely different pool of casks. So in that sense, it will be different, but we're still aiming for that chocolate characteristic those chocolatey casks to create scallywag 100% sherry cast as well let's go another cracker for jam 
yeah, Ali, I completely agree, the dryness. And I think you find that with a lot of sherry cask whiskey, especially ones that have had that level of influence, which you can see in the color, is that dryness. But at the same time, you've got warmth and kind of gooey Christmas cake and chocolate, melted chocolate. And it's really bizarre, isn't it? But yeah, absolutely. On your tongue, you've got that dryness, like a kind of a high percentage red wine. I think, I think sometimes with the um, with sherry cask, you do get that rich sweetness coming through, but over time, it can be quite sickly. Whereas I think what's quite mm. nice about this dram is it's sweet, but then you get that nice kind of dryness and bitterness and it kind of resets the palate a little bit as well. Yeah, absolutely. But it's so drinkable. It's dangerously drinkable. Toby's loving this one. Have we nosed back before we get into Big Pete? Have we nosed back? Has anyone had the opportunity to nose the original too? The originals, meaning the original scallywag, like... The, no apologies, the Epicurean, Ruby Port. I, saw, um, I have. <laughs> and um, my... M m at the moment, my favourite is the Epicurean. <laughs> Epicurean is still your favourite? Yeah, at the moment, yeah, the first one. Yeah, it's, it's just... It's just shown at me. Buy me a bottle. Uh, buy a bottle. <laughs> you know what I'm getting now in the Timber Species is really kind of creamy vanilla banana. I don't know about anyone else, but going from the Scallywag back to the Timorous Beastie. Yeah. yeah, it's it's just now in the in the compared to the to the um, Scallywag, what you just said about the palate of the Timorous Beastie and the Epicurean is unbelievable sweetness coming out of the glass. Yeah, yeah. I think now even more than uh, when I first tried it. Very stunning. And just to kind of. Think reiterate oh, the opportunity that we have currently is that all of these whiskies are not released yet mm. you know this is none of these have been released you are the only people that are, have tasted these apart from you know fred, fred lane Gara lane chris and um, i think that's absolutely remarkable to be honest and um, you we've not even seen the bottles images we're going to see it with petrichor i'm going to show you in a second but i think this liquid is you're the first people to taste it in the world no way yeah it's not been released to anyone else <laughs> I didn't even realise my microphone was on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's dead on, Stuart. Good lad. Thank you. Apologies for that. Oh. No, it's good. It was, it was, it was sincere. <laughs> it was sincere because it was sincere. Here, the, I, I, and to be honest, I was late to the tasting there, but here, even just even just sniffing that scallywag, it's just unreal. Yeah. yeah I'm liking as, that. as I said, I'll be, I'll be recording this. So see tomorrow uh, mid morning. It'll be available on, on YouTube. So you'll be able to catch oh, I'll, I'll make use of it Friday night. When, when <laughs> I'll, be, uh, I'll, be getting, I'll be getting right torn into them. Uh, unfortunately, it's a school night. So I just had to put the kids to bed. And yeah. Understand what wow. goes on. Uh, Timorous Beast, though. Was the Timorous Beast good, was it? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm quite biased, obviously. But you can ask the group. <laughs> was, it, was it good? Because it is my. Do you know what? Out of all. Yeah. Out of, all of the blends and, uh, that comes out of Scotland doesn't matter who who you know who's producing what the Timorous Beastie. You guys have produced something special. Every single I have every single one of them tried every single one of them. Bar there was one now there was one that went to China and one went to Japan. I think I got the Chinese one, but I didn't get the Japanese one. I think it was, and they've all been great. Every single one of them's just been unique. This to me, the color of this, what what is what is going on here? <laughs> It's not what I was expecting. So um, yeah, it better be great. No, it is, and you know what? See, I like I like the fact you touched on the color. We talked about it earlier during it. Is that you know you assume that it's going to be maybe thin or or light, and and it's anything but really viscous okay. and bold. That sweet vanilla punchy flavor. It's fantastic. I think another another great thing is the um, the value for money for the for the whiskies as well. Uh, obviously, don't don't tell marketing this, but I think uh, you know you're able. To get some cracking blended whiskies, and you don't feel that you're being that you're kind of wincing, or you're thinking, "Oh, I'll roll the eyes." All the blends seem to be at a really cracking price point for what you get for the money as well. Ali, yeah. that's two nights in a row you've been telling marketing to put prices up. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I need to leave now. I've had a dram. <laughs> you're not even you're buying too much. You're spot. You're spot on. You're, do you know what? You're spot on. See on. See on price. On on price, and again. Like I, I, I revert back to the first time I ever had a the first time I had a Timorous Beastie was I had the forty year old right and I was very lucky to have the forty year old and I, I bought it and I tasted it and I was just I was blown away by the fact that all these whiskies 
were 40 or 40 years or above that had been you know blended into the into the Timothy Beastie. But that 21 year old is a benchmark. I use that 21 year old. Um, I bought about I don't know about 15 bottles. There's Cara going at it, and um, and, and I use it for I use it for tastings all the time. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But it's it's the benchmark. See, see for and the price point was just spot on for me to be able to go and buy fifteen of them. Do you know what I mean? Shows you the price. The price was right, and I was able. And I've used it. I've used it for the last two years in tastings. Lot, you know, and and I use it as an introduction for a lot of the guys over here in, in Ireland. I use it as an introduction to introduce them to Highland single malts, but say this is a blend. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Be careful. This is a blend. But I tell you what. It stands up as any good good single malt, you know what I mean? So no, that's smart. That's so smart. But that's but that's it. I mean, it's, well, it's amazing how you know we get five categories of Scotch whiskey. You get five categories of Scotch whiskey, and let's talk about malt as a category. Single malt is, is technically blended. You're just taking casks from the same distillery. That's all you're doing. You can take a million casks from one distillery, blend it together. It's still single malt. It just contains the same new make spirit. Blended malt as a category and legally has to be called blended malt from the SWA. Is taking multiple casks from multiple distilleries so it's two or more distilleries is technically blended malt it's you know single malt being a violin a blended malt being an orchestra it really allows you to maintain that malt characteristic that i think we all find very desirable but you're able to take the best casks from any distillery effectively you want um, and what we're doing with the remarkable regional malts is taking a very specific region um, but it is it is that thing is that you're maintaining that malt flavor profile and then just expanding your horizons to have a new mixed spirit and how that ca- that spirit is going to react with different casks, whether it's viscous, whether it's been copper starved or whatever it may be. Um, I have a stupid question there. I know I put it into the chat, but do you just use the same distilleries for the combinations? Is that, be the, is same that the, core distilleries? Be the same core distilleries that we're using? But yeah. like anyone will know, you know, one cast to another will vary. Um, But, you know, with our batches, we're looking at 9,000 bottles per batch of our core RRMs, which is, you know, to a larger company, that would be a limited edition. So our key focus with any one of our our remarkable regional malts, and, you know, these are obviously much smaller batches than that. The Epicureans with 648 bottles. So, you know, our our key focus with all of it is making sure that the quality is there, because if we put out, which we wouldn't, if you put out a batch that isn't meeting par, um, you'll, you'll hear about it. Of course you'll hear about it. Um, but yeah, nine thousand bottles for each batch is a really, it's a really niche amount um, in comparison to let's say the big boys out there. So, are we ready to dominate and bring that barbecue that you're having this weekend to a different level? Right, Heinz, <laughs> give me a massive thumbs up. I'll take that. We are moving on to the none other than Big Pete. Now, Big <laughs> Pete is not a whiskey. Big Pete is a person. I have been told this a hundred times, but he exists. He is a person. He's a fisherman on Isla. He's a very good friend of Douglas Lane. But now we're moving into Big Pete, the Petricor edition. Now, some of you might be asking, what is Petricor? We've taken this from the word Petricor, which means when water, that smell, when rain hits dry, salty earth. And that is what Petricor, or Petricor in this case, see what we've done there. And that's where that comes from. So. I have the bottle here, probably the first people to see it, which I'm very excited about. So this is our Big Pete Petricor edition. <laughs> Rain jack on. <laughs> because it's pushing them. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's always pushing it in the hill. <laughs> you can see we've got the lovely embossing here. Embossing here, embossing on Big Pete and the uh, wording itself. But that is our Big Pete Petricor edition. I think it's absolutely brilliant. If anyone's had a nose of this already, you'll see exactly where we're going with this. This oh, is not like Pete jacket when it comes out. Yeah, it was good, isn't it? Great on it. So this is cask strength, big Pete. Yeah. How are we getting on with the nose with that? Very briny. Yeah, very smoky. Fifty three point eight percent. Yeah, it's a chimney smoke. It's a, you know, you're going down Port Nahaven, you're going, the, you're passing the, the houses down to the lighthouse, and 
every single house has got that chimney yeah. just reeking the smoke, and that's yeah. what you've got in it. I love yeah. the irony that we've gone for a you know petrichor, the smell of water. There's no water in it. Just completely <laughs> pumps in all of it. This is what the air smells like in, in 2019 uh, when I was there in, in November on Isla, just near the Port Ellen. Um, the Port Ellen Mosing, sorry, I, right. Unbelievable. But of course, yeah, you know, May is a massive, massive month for Isla. And uh, this yeah. is our festival bottling of Big Pete. Yeah, I would have said this was more damp wood smoke rather than house fire smoke. So I would have said that typical bonfire that you have at the side of the sea with the sea air, sea spray sort of coming over it. Yeah. I could agree with you there. If I can butt in here, um, it depends on what wood you use in your fire. Yeah. Right? yeah. A lot of, uh, you know, there's that, um, there's that, there's those people that just use the wrong wood, but it's also wet, and then it yeah. comes out like as if there's a new pulp that's just been um, announced, mm -hmm. right? And it's really that kind of that's what I'm talking about, you know. So yeah. it's not your normal chimney smoke, yeah, it's that kind of one that, yeah, it's a bit too much in your face, mm. yeah. I, see, I, I, yeah, I would say it's you know, the, the wood that's probably being washed up on your beach, you know, yeah, full, full of salt, full of. Mm. Sort of and still still quite damp and yeah sort of rotten leaves type thing a hundred percent because you've, the one you've thing i love about big pete if anyone's focusing on the palette is the nose is fairly clean and organized as it goes as soon as you take it onto the palette it just builds and grows and transforms from i think somebody mentioned chimney smoke you know control chimney smoke and then just wild on the beach bonfire smoke with the wind blasting it completely envelops your palate. And as I said, you know, no Isla whiskey is complete without exhaling, breathing it out through the nose. And that's, for me, that's good okay. Isla whiskey. That's when it finishes. That's good. I think, I think just so, from the palate. Last round, the end, certainly like... not the last conversation. Slange. Slange of art. Slange Here, it's, it's, nearly, it's nearly water looking like. I mean, it really is clear. Oh. The thing is, no, see I'm... with an Isla, it's not not even an Isla. See with a peaty whiskey, yeah. That's that's what you want. You Smart. want it to be, yeah, arguably as young as possible. You know that you want it to be a light color because you know that you're going to get that immediate punch of peat. Hundred percent. That's what you're chasing. It smells. It, it smells. Listen, you're making me sad because I want to drink it right now, but it smells unreal. Um, it's actually but... terrible. <laughs> that's better. Sorry, that's better. You're, um, thank you. Thank you, thank you, sir. Yeah, just send your you. sample to Soren. <laughs> so, um, I gotta say, I get a lot of seafood in there, like those um, squid rings with um, lemon squeezed on top. So it's like nice. a seafood platter yep. to me. So that's really oh. cool. And of course, the typical Big Pete smoke. Um, I'm looking here, like Pez and Victor said smells like Isla, and I completely agree. I think Big Pete is one of those, you know, our core Big Pete, I think, is one of those ones that has just captured all of Isla in a dram. I think you've got on the nose and the tip of the palate, you have that level of sweetness and delicate peat smoke that comes with the Kalila. And then all of a sudden that build and build and grows like, through more more into your Ardbeg and Lafroigs, where you have that really deep cut into the PPM, mm -hmm. uh, you know, dragging all those phenols through. I, I absolutely adore Big Pete. And I always take that opportunity to show people how it changes from nose immediate palate into just the build and then finish and exhale it's it transforms completely Stuart you talked about how you know it changes from nose to palate Big Pete I think is a perfect example of how it goes from when oh, it's soft we talked about seaweed the damp wood I completely agree with and then just wow there it is it's still sitting there you're still breathing it out you can still taste it it's yeah. just fantastic yeah this I is one of those noses that just lead into the palate it, yeah, it doesn't swipe your left or right. You just go yeah. straight in. You know amplifies what you're going to get, and it just amplifies it. Yeah. So, and I just want to commend your uh, backdrop. I mean, if this is your private, if this is your private whiskey collection, son, you're you're on a winner. Yeah, it's not virtual. It's not fake. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> real. Listen, uh, the so, XLPs are up there. Double signs. <laughs> Sorry, just out of curiosity, on 
and I just I, I'm just noticing just on your your left hand shoulder. Am I yep. seeing am I seeing foundation bottles up there in the blue? The Glen Fidex. Right. I, I, if that's what it is, listen. I, I, enough. I don't. We don't need to talk about because we're, we're we're talking about the, the, the Douglas Lane stuff. But yep. wow. Oh wow. Um, the only person that's got him beat is Graham with his warehouse full of casts. Yeah, <laughs> he's got us all beat. <laughs> Send us one yeah, over. Man. Good. 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 That, I didn't see if you lifted one of those. With great yeah, music, the that. ghost reserves. For for good. me, what what's interesting is that um, I guess I know I don't know if it's just me, but I think uh, the alcohol level, if I have had to guess it blindly, I would say it was much lower because. Yep. I had many big peat expression on a on a lower alcohol level that I would have guessed much more alcohol. And here it is, um, first of all, on the nose. It's not typical big peat because there's a, a hidden sweetness, I would say. Yeah. And then you can keep it in your mouth very, very long and it is um, very gentle and not, not, not the hard alcohol punch that's very, very delicate. Yeah. Completely agree. And I, I think there's a huge amount to say there for the act of blending is, you know, softening and managing and balancing it, despite the fact that you're going for intense medicinal, intense PT flavors. I think there's a huge amount to say there for the, the actual act of blending and making sure that you're not overly intense in these areas, that you have a level of balance that, as you say, isn't overpowering or, or you know, unpalatable i think that's very palatable very easy drinking despite the fact it is cash strength and um, it's not no, gonna, say, it seems lower than it actually is i'm gonna get yeah, i'm getting a glass i my head off. <laughs> i've got a cold <laughs> <laughs> given in i've got a couple of questions um Please go. uh, for, first of all i'm just going to say that obviously it's a great drum it's different than your normal other big piece also the christmas editions that came out as well this is totally another different class to, uh, to this big peak. Um, secondly, I was going to say that um, I'm going to ask about the uh, well, two questions. One about the phage. Is it going to be coming out uh, during the phage aisle? Um, this will be out over the, over the period of the festival. So it's going to be coming out within that time? Yeah. Right, online. Yep. Mm. Right. It's online now. <clears throat> ah. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. a, a, a retailer's just emailed me to tell me to buy it. Ah, right, okay. <laughs> okay. Can, we, can, we can we purchase these? And the last question uh, that I was going to ask was, um, always says at the bottom of Big Pete, what is in the Big Pete? You've got the different distilleries. It's also, uh, are these uh, distilleries still in there as well as the, the Springfield Port, Ellen? Of course. Yeah, so what yeah. you're looking for is maintaining that flavour profile of Big Pete, so we'll never look to change that. Always looking to achieve that that profile of Big Pete, and I think that still is is very much there. So you make sure that these distilleries are always in there? Yeah, as far as I'm aware, Gavin, we're always looking to do that, as far as I've been told, yeah. So how much Port Ellen is still got in your sense? I'm not telling you. <laughs> No, the, the wonderful thing is, is, you know, Port Ellen, as we all know, is closed distillery and it's now at an absolute premium. And, and I love, uh, you know, Fred's chat. He, he said, you know, if I knew the price of Port Ellen now, I wouldn't have put so much in the blended scotch we put around Asia. I uh, absolutely love that. I think he's maybe single-handedly responsible for the price of Port Ellen as it stands today. Um, was, but yes, uh, I'm not telling you how much we're putting in, but it is in every batch. Was it, was it, was it, Matty, is it Matthias that said something about there's, there's, a, there's definitely a sweetness to this? No, 100%. See, a lot of people immediately take on Big Pete and they, they dismiss it as, you know, just PT and medicinal. But there is sweetness in it. Oh, there's 100%. a beautiful sweetness here. There's a, a creamy sweetness. There's like a lemon meringue pie sweetness. I always find it, I think, arguably with any Big Pete that we've done. You know, we obviously, we did our, our, um, our vintage series. We did the 26, the 27, the 33, the 28-year-old, where I didn't see it as much there, obviously. But any other Big Pete uh, variant that we've done, for me, it's like lemon meringue pie sweetness. It is there. Absolutely. Nice. Very, very subtle, sweet notes, promising already in the nose and then on the palate. Always in the, in the background, this, this sweetness behind the, the sea smoke. Wonderful. 
Yeah, Graham said licorice flavour. I completely agree with. There's a licorice root yep. sweetness, especially on the palate as it kind of softens. It does almost seem like it's it, it's been literally seasoned in a way. It's got a nice kind of salinity as well as a kind of subtle pepperiness for me as well. It's it, it's not just smoke. It's got a nice kind of rounded rounded note with a little bit of everything. It's it's a bit of a crowd pleaser. This I think. So are you taking orders already? This isn't released until the 10th of May, Alan. Oh, we, 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 we are in love with the scallywag and we are in love with the pitting. Pete in no the big Pete. The big Pete in no. Because obviously we're from England and we don't get a lot of the accent things. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite all right. It's quite all right. Essex you can see the lines released way. today. I was very happy with that. I see you got your Northern glasses as well. Professional. Oh, beautiful. And we've got we've got Timorous and we've got Scallywag as well. We are tarts. Whereabouts is Soren's shop? Shop in my house. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was going to get in the car tomorrow morning and come and visit you. <laughs> well, well you're right, I'm in England too, so just pop over. Oh, that's an invite. Whereabouts is he? Brilliant. So, it's any the pop up banner as well. Sorry, oh, Stuart, on you go. I think I it's the pop up banner for Soren as well. I think that's what really adds to the shop appearance. Yeah, that, that's that's because I'm a, I'm an ambassador for them, so that's obviously for the tastings. It is a hell of a collection, though. That's yeah. On we'll resident. talk about it after the recording because it's a bit unfair to be talking about my place when we're on a Douglas Soren tasting. Thanks, Soren. <laughs> Stuart, I mean, I suppose, I mean, you made me drink that, that you know, and you've got me on the, the you've got me on the, the big Pete right now. But um, in terms of the, in terms of the timorous Pete, well, okay, big Pete, we had a member in our club um, a couple of years back got her face on a bottle of big Pete. Yes. Mm. Yeah. You, uh -huh. you guys did your your faces of uh, big Pete. Yeah. Are you going to do that again? Because I tell you something. That was class, and we, we <laughs> had a beautiful ball. Listen, she lived, she lived, she lived off that for a long well. time here in Belfast. She lived off that fame for a long time. My face is on Big Pete's bottle, so um, that'd be pretty cool to do again. By the way, oh, it's, it's, it's a good note. We'll keep that in mind because it's a uh, you know the great thing with us. It's a never say never scenario, and I don't mean that as a, a politician's answer. It genuinely is. Um, anything that you know, we we consider basically everything. And I think there's a few people in this call that know that, um, and we consider it. You know, Rocky and Sherry. Absolutely love it. It's just an absolute wild card of a dram, but yeah, I mean, I, I just want my face in a big deep bottle now, to be honest. <laughs> but no, is there any other questions that anyone wants to submit for? Did you already say how many bottles of the Big Pete there will be? Yeah, I think I've got the notes here. So when I got it, put it here. I've not got it. So 5,190. Who's got the notes there? Gavin, you got the notes there? No, but uh, Graham Brown just wrote 5,190 bottles. Not 100% so, sure how accurate it may be, but I know, I don't know, uh, Matthias. If they, if they hit Germany, it's fine by me, that's okay. Uh, 5,190 bottles. That seems to be the number. Yep. Sure. When's the Scallywag going to be available? Scallywag's going to be available from 7th of July on World Chocolate Day. Oh, that's my birthday. Yes. Is that your, is that your birthday? <laughs> that's my actual birthday, yeah. <laughs> Did oh, you know that already? Uh, uh, no, no, I wasn't aware of that, but there you go. There you go. And is the Epicurean available? Sorry. Epicurean is going to be available on late June. In late June. June, well, I better set my alarm. <laughs> yeah, it's best. Is um, the same for you there. Is we that, tell me for birthday. sale just now? Say again, sorry. Is we Timmy for sale just now? We Timmy, we Timorous BCC for sale just now? <laughs> no, not available for sale just now. And um, we'll be available for four to six weeks with um, selected specialist retailers, and then after that four to six period, uh, it'll be available elsewhere. Excellent. Oh, can't I can't wait for that pump? Oh, there we go. So I'm very keen to get to the informal session. So, as any yeah. other questions, feel free to hammer them in. Uh, sure. It'll be a last would, couple of seconds to do so. I would like to ask... Sorry, sorry, sorry. Veronica, please. 
I would like to ask, are you planning to do something like a liters bottles, like a gift pack of the of these, um, instead of like a full bottles, just a small bottles, like a gift pack? Are you planning? No, to we're most likely not because of the fact that we're doing them in su I mean, such small batches that they are limited edition releases. So no, there is no plan, as I know, to do them in the miniatures or in gift packs. Okay, it's just it's an amazing collection. I really enjoy every single one. Thank you. No problem. Spot on, it's a pleasure. So no, I'm going to thank you all very much for coming to the inaugural, the first whiskey discovery tasting. I think this is a genuinely, I absolutely adore the fact that we're able to do this and give you the opportunity and give myself the opportunity to sample some of these whiskies before they even hit the shelf. So I want to thank each and every one of you for joining um, and thank you for your questions and engagement. It's been an absolute pleasure.